Hi, and welcome to the Assemblines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So today I want to talk all about fonts, but not just any fonts. I want to talk about Modern Tektura, which is the font that Apple used for its logos and computer badges back in the 1980s. So let's get started. The Mater Tektura font was created in 1975 by Othmar Mater, who was an Austrian type and graphic designer. In the 1970s, Mater created four typefaces, including Mater Umbra, Mater Tektura, Mater Alu Style, and Mater Femina. Mater Tektura had a futuristic and techno look to it and was quickly picked up by many companies, including Apple Computer, Reebok, Trapper Keeper, and even the band Steamroller. At Apple, the Modern Tektura font was primarily used for branding on its Apple II line of computers, including the badges on the computer, the boxes, as well as on the manuals. In 1984, Apple started to move away from the use of Mater Tektura when it came out with a Macintosh, which used a font called Apple Garamond. Apple continued to use the Mater Tektura font on its Apple IIe until the introduction of the IIe Platinum and the 2GS. A couple of weeks ago, I became interested in designing a custom t-shirt for my Summerlines podcast. I wanted to use the Mater Tektura font that had been used on the Apple II line back in the 1980s. The problem was finding a font online that actually matched the typeface that was used. The fonts that were out there all had slight problems. For example, one font I found, Mater Tektura Normal, was just too light and thin even though it looked very similar. I found another one called Modern Tektura Cyrillic, but again, it wasn't quite the same as what Apple Computer had used. For example, if you'll look, the letter I is not the same height as the rest of the letters, and when they were branding the Apple Computer Inc., they didn't include the dot over the I. An even bigger problem with the font was the letter S. In the original Modern Tektura font, the S has a kind of futuristic swooping style, which unfortunately, even though it looks very cool and futuristic, is somewhat unreadable. Apple realized this, and when they came out with the Disc 2 labels, as well as the label on the drive itself, they changed the letter S to make it more legible. I wanted to go ahead and actually use this new S in my Assembly Lines t-shirt. Unfortunately, there was no font out there that actually had this different style. So what did I do? Well, it was time to fire up FontForge. FontForge is a fantastic program that lets you create custom font sets. Unfortunately, it's also extremely complicated. I tend to fire it up about once every three to four years to do something, and every time I have to relearn the interface. When you open up the FontForge program, you're presented with all of the glyphs that are within the font itself. The program works by clicking on an individual glyph and then editing the control points. So you can see these are the individual control points, and as I edit those, they dynamically update over in the smaller display window. There's lots of controls for fine-tuning the placement of points, doing spline curves. You can also edit what pairs of characters look like together, called kerning pairs. So for example, in my assembly lines thing, I noticed that the two S's were actually too close together. And so I had to go in here and change the kerning for the two S's. Finally, when you're happy with your font, you can go in and change the font info. And this is where you put things like the name of the font, who designed it, a copyright, etc. And then at the very end, you simply generate your font and output it as, say, a true type or open type font. I ended up having to modify seven font shapes in the Mater Tektura font. I based mine off of the Mater Tektura Cyrillic since that was the closest. The first thing I wanted to do was change the S so that it just looked more like a standard letter. And this was fairly straightforward. I also changed the I and the J so that the top of the letter came up to the top of the other letters. And then it had an optional letter I which didn't have the dot. The custom letter I can be accessed using option I followed by another I, which is just an accent character. And this will produce the one that doesn't have the dot over it. 
I also wanted to change the square brackets so that in the disc 2 label they actually appeared the same height as the other letters and they were closer together. Next I switched gears to the slashes in the Apple 2E label. In the original Modern Tectura the slashes were long and skinny and went above and below the ascender and descender. So I went ahead and made them the same base height as the rest of the letters. And I also fattened them up a little bit to match the badges on the Apple IIe. So how did it turn out? Well, as you can see, the logo at the top is the original Apple computer logo that I downloaded from the web. At the bottom is my version of the font. And as you can see, it closely matches the original font. Finally, you can see that the Apple IIe and Disk 2 labels also match the originals. So what about my own assembly lines graphic? Well, I think it looks a lot better in the new font compared to the old one. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Modern Tectura font and all of the changes that I had to make to have it conform to the way it looked back when Apple was using it in the 1980s. If you're interested in using this font in any of your own projects, I'll have a link in the show notes. If you do end up using this font for any projects, please leave a comment below as I'd be really curious. Also, keep an eye out for upcoming swag based on my Assemblines podcast. As always, thanks for watching.